Okay, three more days of gender queer challenges. Actually, it worked out pretty well to do them in clusters like this because it makes for one 10 minute video. Today's are when did you realize you were gender queer? Uh, discuss dysmorphia. And oh, something you like about your body which is something that doesn't get discussed either medically or often enough in genderqueer culture. We talk a lot about what we don't like about our body. Obviously, <laughs> I have some charge around that one, so. I always had this sneaking suspicion that there was more going on in my life than what I was being told. So I never consciously realized I was genderqueer, of course, because there was no language or being genderqueer for 30, 40 years of my life. So the concept of genderqueer is relatively new. And it took me a long time to even adopt that because I present as cis. I pass as cis. I assume myself to be cis. Uh, because there was no room, place, permission, or language to even have the conversation. I lived with a trans woman for three and a half years and still, if I were offered the option, would probably have referred to myself as cis. Well, I might have said, I don't think I get to call myself genderqueer, so I guess I have to say I'm cis. We're that primitive and remedial in the conversation. I am attracted to a particular type, apparently, of trans woman. Eh, type? Non-type. While I appreciate people who dress up for special occasions, and I love drag shows, and that sort of thing, I wouldn't want to have to live with somebody with that complicated of a wardrobe all the time. I also wouldn't want to have to live with somebody if they felt compelled to masquerade all the time, whether they were a cis woman, a cis man, a trans woman, a trans man, or a genderqueer. If they feel a need for an artificial facade constantly, that's too much energy That's to, to work with that because it looks like they're hiding something. Even if they're not, it looks like it and it makes me uncomfortable. I worked in fashion for many years and I know how much work it takes for that sort of an elaborate presentation. Again, for special occasions, it's an art form. But I've also lived around people who cannot leave the house. They cannot be seen by other household members until they have bathed, shaved every hair off of their body put on their makeup and put on their clothing. So the people that I'm attracted to tend to just be ordinary people living their lives who are not even conscious of the fact that they're doing a gender fuck. The person that I lived with for three and a half years went through uh, surgery back in the bad old days when it was very primitive and went through a lot of shit to be able to live fully as a female. But this person is very athletic, is good with power tools, is a nerd and a geek. And I find that very endearing, that makeup and hair and all that are not particularly of any interest to this person. I mean, it's sort of like a science experiment, but not as a lifestyle. Um, that it's something to try on for fun, sort of like putting on a chipmunk costume, but it can be removed. It's not that one would go around looking like a chipmunk all the time. But it's, it's a person who fluctuates between being uh, kind of a homespun butch to being rather girly. And I found that authentic and sweet. So I'm attracted to that. I don't think it has anything to do with uh, genital configuration, 
gender identity, even sexual orientation, gender presentation, or biological sex. I think it has to do with that ability to express oneself authentically and natively without much conscious thought to how one should be in the world. So finally calling myself genderqueer was a matter of, this is well after this other person and I broke up, uh, was a matter of saying, wait a minute, I am too. I qualify it constantly because I'm not a trans person. I don't want to be a man. So I qualify it constantly. I'm aware of the fact that I have privilege, that I'm probably not going to get beaten up in the dark alley for being a trap, quote unquote. Please forgive it, but you know that expression is out there. And it aligns not only with my own internal psychology and my own experience in my own body, but it aligns politically and socially with me as well. So I'd say I started entertaining the idea that I had a right to call myself genderqueer about three years ago. Out of 55 years, it's only been the past three years. Now gender dysmorphia. I don't know if this is a cop-out, but it looks to me like the culture is gender dysmorphic, not me. There are so, there's so much baggage placed on presentation, placed on self-identity, placed on body hatred, to sell products, to keep us easily cataloged so they know what to do with us, uh, to force society to operate by an artificial standard that's convenient for the people in power. It looks to me like a lot of the shit that we're told about ourselves has nothing to do with anything natural or innate or intuitive or real. So maybe it's a cop out to say this, but I think the culture is gender dysmorphic and phobic. I'm not going to discuss the particulars of my physiology right now. I do plan to do that video. Um, I have to bust through a lot of personal taboos in order to make this video things that you're not allowed to say for some reasons that you wouldn't think I wouldn't want to say them. I'm still working on that, so I will get into the physiology of it at some point, but not right here, not right now. But I will say this. I have been told from a very early age that there are things about my body that I shouldn't want and that I shouldn't do with the body that I came packaged in. And at 55 years old, I'm still exploring ways in which my body has been taken away from me by a culture that doesn't want me to have full access to it. And then you lay on that things like Sigmund Freud, who really did a lot of damage to queers and women. A lot of damage. And then you lay on that the fact that they came out as a radical feminist. And there were things that we were in denial of because of people like Freud who said, well, a real woman should X, Y, Z. And the church. And there was a lot of stuff that we had to be in denial about just in order to live our lives without hearing how sick and damaged and sinful and crazy we were. So I'm still processing through that. And to expose that having to do with my physiology to random strangers on the internet, that's a scary proposition. Look, I can't even say the word cis without 18,000 people coming down on my head. Now I'm going to talk about my body. So we'll get there. For me, it's been a process of uh, learning to forgive myself for having internalized messages that have nothing to do with me as an authentic person and have been imposed on me as cultural taboos. The things I'm talking about are just as psychologically restraining as being told from birth that I'm going to have to wear a burqa or a hijab. Wearing loose clothing. I have a belly. I have big boobs. I'm out here right now wearing this cotton. I don't know if it's a nightgown or a house dress. I wear it as a house dress. 
I won't set foot out the gate because I'm not wearing a bra uh, when I go out into public if I decide to wear a t-shirt I make sure that it's loose enough it doesn't show my belly it's a less than 10 foot walk from my front door to come out here I'm just a couple of times in the middle of the night now there's parachutes up and fences and the view is obscured you really can't see into my yard easily unless you're just right up there staring into it so somebody walking by can't really see in here but I sleep in the nude and I will wake up in the middle of the night and remember there's something out here this out here is sort of like my outdoor living room I will remember and dishwashing station and 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 you know, it's my workspace, you know, because there's no room in the 30-foot travel trailer that's seven feet wide. So I will wake up groggy and not functioning very well, and I will have to remember that I cannot come out here until I put something on to cover my body in case somebody might see my body. Ten-foot walk to come out, grab something, go back in the house. Maybe a five-second trip. And I do that because I would be uncomfortable being seen exposed. Why would I be uncomfortable being seen exposed? Because of what I've been taught. The taboos that I've been taught. What do I like about my body? I'm not going to refer to a part or a series of parts or anything like that. I've been in physical pain my entire life because of a lot of abuse. The shoulder doesn't function well, so I have to bear all weight pretty much on this side of my body. And that puts strain on my hips, my legs, my back. Uh, but this shoulder's broken, so it can't carry weight and it can't do a lot of work and it can't do a lot of reaching up overhead. And so I'm kind of protected on the side of my upper body. And I've been in pain my whole life. I had to go home with a backpack, a big, heavy backpack full of books, and walk about a mile from the bus carrying these books. And my shoulder was just, and I thought I just wasn't trying hard enough. That's what I mean about internalizing messages. So what I like about my body is that even though they think I have multiple sclerosis, and this has been going on for over 20 years, and even though I've lived in a way where I've been forced to do a lot of very hard manual physical labor, very hard, I mean driving fence posts, pushing my own couch up a flight of stairs in an apartment building, really hard work because there was nobody to help me and I couldn't hire anybody and I couldn't afford tools and equipment and prosthetic devices to, or adaptive equipment to do the work for me. Um, so what I like most about my body is that she's been strong and for the most part dependable as long as I don't force her. As far as my physical appearance, I'm a pretty average person. Uh, and when I go out, even just to go to a local store to buy a pack of smokes or a bottle of soda pop or something, I always make sure that I'm dressed nicely. Other people can show up in their jammies or old soiled t-shirts or funky shoes or whatever, but no. I present as a middle-aged, middle-class woman so that I won't attract any undue attention or undue criticism. How would I like to present? Oh, baby. But that's what I like about my body, is that she's been strong and for the most part dependable and reliable and has really been there for me.